Unlike most of the other sectors in Margalef that are long, that are really aesthetic and in beautiful spots deep in the nature, laboratory is definitely not like that. It's short, it's next to the road, it might not be the most aesthetic piece of rock you'll ever see, but it hosts arguably the most famous route in Margalef called First Round First Minute, famous from the Chris Sharma videos who finally made the first ascent back in 2011. Even though all the routes in Laboratory are relatively short, they are usually pretty intense right from the beginning and usually all the way to the top. And despite the low number of moves, they are resistant. You really need a good portion of power resistance in order to be able to do it. Being just strong might not be enough. This is the line of first round first minute, 9B. More to the right, sharing the same start, there's a really classic 8C plus called Bumae. Right in between, there was an old project still sharing the same start. It was bolted by Dani Andrada and surprisingly, it was still lacking of the first ascent. Interestingly, in some of the guidebooks, it claims that it was climbed as an 8C plus 9A, but it turned out that this information was not true. The very beginning, as you can see, is really steep and it's obviously really powerful. The first five moves are the same as first round, first minute. They are maybe not that hard on its own, but takes a lot of energy away. These moves right after, they might be the crux of Bumae on itself. It's got a lot of possible betas. My beta was the sneaky knee bar and weird kind of almost dino into a knee bar into the spinch. Here the section is pretty tangeny. The holds are quite slopey. This clip, it's not very comfortable. And you enter the crux of El Potro. This right hand pinch and big move into the mono. It's really hard to hit, even though the mono is quite good. And the next three moves are really resistant. And what I would say, red point crux of the whole route. This is the final move, which could be heartbreaking because it's really far into a good pocket that it's also quite hard to reach. Once you gain this pocket, it's kind of almost over, but you still have to be focused. Interesting fact is that to the left, you can see the top crux of first round, first minute, 9B, including the infamous mono move. And what would be interesting would be to start in El Potro or even adding the first 8C bowler problem more to the right and linking all of this into this mono move and doing the crux of first round, first minute after all of this, which could be very futuristic line 9C in my opinion. So let's go back to climbing El Potro. Uh, here I reach the jug, which is in common with Bumaye. I am a little bit pumped, but I could recover quite well in this jug. And I also knew that the top out is not that difficult. The only problem could be that I actually didn't know the top out very well. I tried to save as much skin and energy, so I didn't even try these moves. It was more just touching the holds feeling the movements and figuring out that this could be the best possible sequence of moves. And here you can see also the trick that sometimes saves me the power and energy that I didn't even climb all the way to the top on my first try when I was checking the moves, but I just left the quick draw in the bolt, which I unclipped. And because there was no beaner in the anchor, I had this extra quick draw on my harness and so the very top is almost unknown to me, but fortunately my intuition told me the correct thing, that the top out is not very difficult and 
I could celebrate the first ascent of this amazing route, El Potro, which in my opinion is a 9A. Maybe not the most difficult 9A, but considerably more difficult than Bumaya, and that's why I think 9A should be a good grade.